is starting tonight. And she is the program leader. Block assist, total blocks hitting 294 on the season. They're going to need that block to be formidable because Taylor Lanfair is Minnesota's best player. And right now, Lori, she's playing like she's the best player in the conference. Definitely the conference and possibly in NCAA. She's a 6-5, 6 rotation player. And she just was named Big Ten Player of the Week last week the third time this season. Yeah, Landfair is the only player in the conference to have double digit kills in every match so far this season. And those Big Ten Player of the Week honors three times in the last five. So she is playing extremely well for Minnesota, who is currently fourth in the Big Ten standings. 15 and seven overall are the Golden Gophers, 10 and four in league play. Maryland, 14 and 12. Five and nine in conference play, which ranks them 11th. But this is a team that is seven and three away from home. Maryland is not intimidated when they go on the road. And the first serve goes to Minnesota in their home whites. Of course, trimmed to maroon. Here's an attack by Maryland in the black uniforms. That'll be kind of difficult for us to see. And looping that over, that's Landfair, and she's done. A long opening rally that is ended by Landfair right on cue with a kill. I think the last two matches Landfair has had around 20 kills for a match and you're going to look to probably see that same amount tonight. She will be given the ball a lot and we'll see her put it away. Now she had 20 kills in the win over Michigan and then followed that up with 19 kills in their victory that followed that over Illinois. In the middle, a kill for number 52, Carter Booth, a freshman out of Denver, six feet seven. Talk about presence. She is a threat. She's hitting a 337 right now. So once again, we're going to see Minnesota spread this offense out. There's the Minnesota block going to work. Out of the back row, a tip, to, a tip try. And play continues on the pancake. Land fair, she's dug. Milan Gomillion is the libero for Maryland. You see her in the yellow jersey. And another kill for Minnesota and an early 3 0 lead. There's an attack and a kill for Maryland to get the Terrapins on the board. Sydney Dowler is the setter for Maryland. She wears number eight. Checking out is Layla Ivey, who got the kill, the freshman from Annapolis, Maryland. Three to one, Minnesota with the early lead. Landfair loops it, covered easily by Dowler. That's Jim Grishaw, who was rejected. Bringing it to Landfair. She's getting a lot of swings early, and an excuse me, dig by Dowler. Another long rally. Booth can't end it. Can the Terps? No. We might be here a while tonight, the way these two teams are playing defense. What a great <laughs> rally. And like we said, we're seeing some of the best offense against some of the best defense and blocking some great defense by both teams. Well, Maryland's defense is pretty good too. Seventh in the country in blocking with the Terrapins atop the rankings. Booth is dug, free ball chance for Minnesota. Booth again, that long slide and at six, seven, she can reach it. Easy play in the back. That's not so easy to return. Another kill for Landfair. In there. And there you have it. Taylor Landfair, she goes at the ball. You watch her and it looks very casual, but then has an amazing fast arm swing. The head coach at Maryland is Adam Hughes. He's in his fifth season. Fifth head coach in Maryland program history. A, a, a bright young coach, no doubt about it. Spent a long time at Penn State working in various uh, jobs under Russ Rose, who of course retired uh, after last season, the legend in the business. So what a great guy to to learn from, but when you look at Adam Hughes's resume, Lori, he's done just a little bit of everything in the various jobs that he's had, so he's well suited to be a head coach. In talking to him, he's also very humble because he's going up against some amazing coaches, Coach McCutcheon, 
and he was fun to talk to him about that relationship. He knows he was a practice player at Penn State, and now here he is at the helm of Maryland. Yeah, I get a kick out of reading Adam Hughes' bio. You, when you talk about a guy paying his dues, he did. He just didn't get paid for it. A lot of his jobs were volunteer assistants and, at UC Irvine as well as at uh, Penn State. And another point for Minnesota. And the, uh, the coach on the other side is a legend who has been in this business for a long, long time. Hugh McCutcheon, his tenure at Minnesota is winding down. He announced a couple of weeks ago that he would retire from coaching and take a position within the athletic department as an assistant AD for coaching development. So he'll utilize that expertise and experience with the entire Minnesota staff. But it's a loss for the sport of volleyball, but a gain for the coaching profession, certainly at Minnesota. There's a kill for Maryland. That was a kill by Jim Grimshaw, grad student, 6'2 pin hitter. She's only played in nine matches, so she's really come on here late in the season. Tough serve. There's a kill for Jenna Wenis. Jenna Wenis, look for her to develop some great swings tonight. She is second in kills behind Landfair with 190. She's also second in attempts with 530. Back to serve for Minnesota is CC McGraw, the Libero. Going to that left side, another easy dig for Minnesota. Out of the back row, Landfair gets another kill. Both Minnesota and Maryland use the back row in attacking. You're going to see Landfair take swings. You're also going to see Sydney set Sire. You might see Sire get set a lot. We've seen some huge numbers put up by number 44 from Maryland. There's a hitting error by Terps and another point for Minnesota. And that lead is stretched to six at nine to three. And a timeout is called by Maryland. Maryland has had a couple of sets that there was just some miscommunication, but there was no connection. So Sydney's got to really step up and communicate with our hitters, let them know what to expect, and get them really fired up to be ready to go. Well, as mentioned, Maryland is 14-12 and 12 on the year. They're coming off a 19-win season a year ago in 19-13. and 13. That's the most wins for the program since 2010. So Adam Hughes has this program trending in the right direction. And we've talked a lot about the block with uh, Raynell Jones, but there are also players like Layla Ivey, the freshman, who's done a nice job. You've got a player in Anastasia Russ, number 88. When have you seen 88 in volleyball? But she's also six foot five, so they have presence to the net. And they have really over the last, well, five years that he's been in charge of the program decided we're going to build this thing on defense. Look at this. When Hughes came in, in 2018, they were 65th. And look at 2022. The last two years, they are first. And that's unbelievable. But I loved what he said. He said, we're looking at personnel to build that up as high as we can well and the person that he's built that around you go back to 2018 Raynell Jones she was a freshman she started all 32 matches as a freshman and has gone on to become the career blocks leader for Maryland but you, you talked about 2018 when they were 65th that's not too good but the year before 144th so they started seeing immediate improvements in the block but I find it interesting in this rugged Big Ten Conference, the best in the country, it's not, it's not even an argument to decide, okay, we've got great offensive teams and attack teams and great coaching. We're going to do it maybe a little bit differently and do it with the block and be good at it. And they ended up being great at it. You're gonna have to be a good blocking team in the Big Ten. There's very little room for air. There's very little room to be comfortable. You've got to be on all the time. And again, Hugh McCutcheon is saying, uh, we are seventh in the country at Minnesota, too, by the way. <laughs> Minnesota's offense, though, is out to a 10-3 lead on the Terps. There's the Minnesota block. Winnis. Dug in the back row by Rachel Kilkelly. And that ball may have been headed out of bounds, but played anyway. And now Maryland has to scramble, and they set it free. Set comes to Winnis, poked around, and that's off the block, and it is down. Kill Kelly could not get that up. And you're seeing Maryland playing some really 
really good defense, but they're not able to execute on the attack right now. And that's why you're seeing this six point differential. They are going to have to get some swings and put it on the floor. And that was 44, Sam Sire. I was mentioning we will probably call her a lot for a lot of swings. And there's the Jones block, turning away the Minnesota attack. That's why they love her in that middle. Second in Big Ten with over one block per set. And you just saw her first one. We'll see how many more she'll get tonight. Winnis, that's off the Terps block and a point for Minnesota. Back up to a six point advantage, 11 to five, set number one. Jen Wenis is a junior out of Frisco, Texas, closing in on 200 kills on the season. She ended the night with 190, averages two and a half per set. Served at Sire, and that's a tough pass for Dowler to handle, and she just could poke it over. Sire tips it hard. That's McGraw with the set, and another kill for Wenis. Jenna Wenis has a great arm swing. It's very fast. And if she can get through the block or use it, tool it, put it on that floor, she's going to be hard to stop tonight. Decent set by McGraw, the libero for Minnesota. In the middle, Jones. Tracked down by McGraw and set free. Gomillion. Got a hand on that to keep it up, and that attack goes long. There's no touch on the Minnesota side, and it's a point for the Golden Gophers. Raynell back in the lineup. She's going to have to. She's only taken one swing tonight, and so you're also seeing a little bit of disconnect with the outside. So Maryland's got to really pick it up and start to have some chemistry and work together. And they're going to try to figure out how to do that with using their second timeout already of this opening set. Minnesota has a 13 to 5 lead on Maryland. I think it's tough because when you look at these two teams, Maryland, it's a real long shot for them to even get a possible appearance in the tournament. So, you know, they have six matches left and they're playing a really tough schedule to come to the end. In Minnesota right now, they want it. They will be in the tournament and they've got to fight for their position when they get into that 64 bracket. Well, they're, both of these teams have tough stretches in the final couple of weeks of the regular season. Uh, Minnesota is going to the NCAA tournament, no question about it. Number nine in the nation and 15 and seven against one of the toughest schedules that they've ever played. But their last four matches, now they'll play Minnesota, or big part, Indiana on Sunday. So they've got a day off and it'll be senior day at uh, the PAV. So the place is expected to be packed to the Raptors with 5,700 plus. But after that, Minnesota has to go on the road for their last four matches, and they'll end on back-to-back -back nights at Ohio State and then at Nebraska on Nebraska's senior night. So four consecutive road games to close things out. They're going to hope that they will have won a couple of those and earned the right, perhaps, to come back and play here to open up the NCAA tournament in December. Minnesota has controlled this opening set. And that touches the tape and has to be played by Jones. That takes Maryland out of system. Left-handed attack for Minnesota, and that is Lauren Crowell, who's getting more and more playing time, number four. She's a freshman redshirt out of Egan, Minnesota. Has only played in now, this is her ninth match of the season. Apparently a violation on uh, Minnesota, so the point goes to Maryland, and the Terps serve it up, and they serve it Landfair. There's a tap by Crow. Wenis. A flying dig by McGraw. Wenis with a lot of speed on that, and she whips it down for the kill. Her arm swing is unbelievable. If you watch her approach, she doesn't do a full rotation towards the net. She can whip that arm right across her body and you don't know where it's going. We haven't seen that shot yet in this match and she's got a lot of kills. Jones out of the middle off the block of 
the Golden Gophers. That's Erica Davis, number 20, that was trying to stop her in the middle. Now Jones will go to the bench. So another point for Maryland in the lead is seven. There's C.C. McGraw, the libero for Minnesota, fourth all time at the school in digs with more than 1,800. Tapped over the middle by Maryland. That's 88, Anastasia Rush out of Pittsburgh. 88. I know. <laughs> I haven't seen that number. I think Sydney would like to make a better connection with her. They're going to need her to be able to put the ball down and get around the block, and she's just mishit a couple. So once again, you know, here's Sydney Dowler. We're talking about her. We haven't talked about her a lot. Six foot setter, junior, 837 assists. She is fire. She is, you watch her energy out on the floor. And now having Raynell back in the lineup, you don't have, you know, the slides behind the setter and all of that. So it's just kind of getting back into gel with the original lineup. Goes into the middle here, and that's an attack by Russ. She averages a, a kill and a half per set. Russ is a junior out of Pittsburgh, six feet five, with a wingspan that is more like somebody who's about six seven or six eight. That's her in the middle, getting another swing and getting another kill. And you can see Sydney still believes in her. Sydney still wants to work the middle because it's going to be important for their overall offense, and she's got to stay in the mix. And Anastasia Rush brings a ton of experience to this Maryland program. I mentioned a Pittsburgh native. She also played at Pitt and was a part of the, uh, the, the Panthers' Elite Eight team in 2020. The Final Four team in 2021 played in three straight NCAA tournaments. Just having her in the room, but she'll be here back for another year. Russ has been a terrific addition for Adam Hughes in terms of experience in so many ways. You saw another kill by Taylor Landfair. Just remember, she averages four and a half kills per set. So this is very common to see her get those kills. Ivy is dug. And that's put down by Carter Booth, the freshman in the middle for Minnesota, who's just gotten more and more comfortable as the season has gone on. She reads well on the net. If you watch her, she moves well, her hands are up, and she reacts to everything on the net. Layla Ivy is dug. Ivy tries again and is turned away. Great dig by Milan Gomillion. Blind tap by Melanie Schaffmaster, the setter for Minnesota. We haven't talked a lot about her. A lot of action at the net. Maryland wants a touch. Minnesota said no. The officials agree with the Terrapins. And talking about Layla Ivy again, she's a freshman and she is really helping out. Layla Ricks has been playing, not playing right now. So you're just going to see her. She's filled in a big role. Terrific serve, but a nice job to get back into system on the Minnesota side and get the set to Carter Booth. Booth now has three kills. Great slide attack behind the setter, and she was able to take that down line. And there was really no block taking that line. Poked around and kept up by Landfair, and there's another kill for Wenis. And that just shows you her last two swings were completely aggressive and fast, and then she gave in the roll shot. And that's one thing that Coach Hughes said that Minnesota is so good at. Cut shots, roll shots, tips, swings, they mix it up. In the middle, and that is Anastasia Russ hitting it too long, and things are getting away from Maryland in set one. Minnesota now leads it by 11, and the Terps have used both of their timeouts. They used them early, and now they just have to endure what is a sizable lead by Minnesota and then look ahead to set number two. Lanfair sets out of the back row. Lennis, who already has six kills in this match. She's dug there. McGraw with another dig. Lennis is going to wind up again. She uses the block played by Gomillion. Tapped over by Grimshaw. 
Winnis is getting a lot of play here in set one. Might be by design with all of the attention the Landfair gets, and Winnis is taking advantage of that. Seven kills now in the opening set. You're right. You have Taylor Landfair, and then who comes to the front row? Jenna Winnis. So she's going to, she's going to get as probably as many kills as Landfair. And that's why they're playing opposite. Winnis had 14 kills in the win over Illinois last weekend. That's the first time she'd been in the double figures in about six matches. Dowler tracks it down, tipped over by Sire. And that's hit out of bounds by Maryland. And the Golden Gophers inch closer to taking set number one. This is tough for Maryland. I know Co Coach Hughes is not expecting what's happening right now with Sire. She's hitting a negative 158. That's not common, and they need her to be effective. Well, she hasn't had a lot of swings either, and there's a service error by Minnesota, one of the few things they've not done well. I was mentioning earlier, we would see Sire with some huge numbers in terms of attacks. She had a match earlier this season against Arizona. She had 19 kills in 77 swings. And then against Nebraska, 14 of 67 swings in that one. And that shows you how much they rely on her, both in the three rotations in the front and one rotation in the back. Carter Booth, slide attack yet again. This is effective. I think you're going to continue to see her shaft match working behind her. And Raynell Jones, as good of a blocker she is, she didn't make it to close that scene. Set point. Grimshaw is blocked out of bounds. That's a point for Maryland. That's one of the concerns for Maryland coming into this. Great block, but Minnesota's offense is one of the fastest that you will see and we've seen that a few times already in this opening set that they're just not able to get that block up in time and Booth and Wenis uh, have uh, been able to get some pretty good kills here in the opening set that goes to Minnesota on that service error the Golden Gophers in command in set number one taking a 25 to 12 the opening frame alone six feet three from Newcastle Indiana she's a junior so she'll be coming back and uh, she may well be Minnesota's best all-around player. We talked about Lanfair being the best player, or perhaps uh, the, the premier candidate for Big Ten Player of the Year, Lanfair. But Shaftmaster, she's got uh, 11 double-doubles when you combine assists and digs, where she's had at least 10 digs, at least 10, or of course, more than 10 assists. But uh, she can play extremely well defensively in the back row, keeping plays alive and then helping to finish them as the center. Minnesota has called her the double-double queen. Um, just because you have to get over 10 assists and 10 digs, and she's had 11 where that's that double-double. Over 2,700 assists in her career. She had 43 assists and 18 digs in the win over Illinois. And oh, by the way, she also had five kills. So that gives you an idea of how good of an all-around player that 6-3 setter is. The Shaftmaster wearing number five for Minnesota. The two teams switch sides for set number two. Minnesota at home in their home whites, trimmed in maroon and gold. Maryland on the road. Black uniforms trimmed in red. With Lori Thomas, I'm Bill Dolman. The Golden Gophers this season at the PAV, their home venue. 10 and 4 on the year. And they have enjoyed uh, terrific crowds throughout the season. The capacity is uh, over 5,700. And they're averaging over 4,700 for their home matches, which is fourth most on average in the country. And the Golden Gophers open up set two with a block. And once again, that was Lay Layla Ivy, a freshman who took that swing. And one of the things Coach Hughes has said is she's extremely explosive, but being a freshman, she can be inconsistent. Look at that set by Shaftmaster just to get a hand on it. Helps to be 6-3. And the attack by Maryland goes long, even though Minnesota was out of system. And the Golden Gophers score the first two points of set two. 
Back to serve is Elise McGee, a junior out of Kansas City. Serving a Grimshaw. And there's a kill for Anastasia Russ, a transfer from Pitt. And being 6'5", along with her wingspan, if she makes contact at a high point with her hand, she should be able to get something on the floor if it's not hit hard or, or it could be hit soft, but she should get those kills. Carter Booth hit that into the net, and that'll give a point to Maryland. Tying it up at two apiece, back to serve is Sydney Dowler. She's the heart of this Maryland team. She's the setter, a junior from Cary, North Carolina. Big Ten setter of the week, mid-December. Uh, First time that Maryland has ever had a player earn the Big Ten setter of the week honor. Coach Hughes says she has so much energy that you actually have to stop drills <laughs> to get her to slow down. We have an agenda today. You're not helping. Sydney. Layla Ivy is done. Looped over by Landfair. Not much on that. Still a good save. Landfair winds up and gets another kill. Landing right in the middle of the court. All three defenders in the back row on Maryland just were stopped and on their heels. There was no forward movement. They have to get more aggressive. They have to get a little bit more fiery in that back row. Poor service received, setting up a free ball for Minnesota, and that's tapped through the block by Landfair. Back-to-back -back kills for her. She now has six. She continues to amaze me at 6-5. You would think she would just take swing after swing, but she mixes it up, which causes defense to just hesitate because they're not sure what they're gonna get. Anastasia Russ is blocked by Minnesota. Carter Booth, 6'7". She's gonna camp out in the middle first. That's her first responsibility. And that one, she could read and was an easy block for her. At this point early on in the match, Minnesota is out blocking. Maryland, and there's a net violation called on Minnesota, and that's a point for the Terps. <laughs> Serving it for Maryland is number five, Lexi Finney, coming in for the first time. She's out of Encinitas, California. Milan Gomillion. Keeps that in play, but sends it over to the Minnesota side, and Carter Booth gets the kill. Carter Booth, I think, is three for three on the backslide. So when that works, as a setter, you are going to continue to just give that player the same set that continues to work over and over. Booth over 125 kills in her freshman season, hitting 337 in 2022. And that's a four-hit violation. Uh, Minnesota kept it alive for a while, but now that's a lift is what the call is. Yes, that was that third uh, third touch on Carter Booth. She just, you know, pushed it and called her on that lift. That's just reaction as much as that ball was pinballing around. Well, it's unique because the NCAA did a survey with all the coaches about what are we going to do with this second ball, this third ball? Are we going to let it be more loose? Are we going to stay strict? The survey was like 50-50, but what they are doing is they're getting more loose on the second touch. But that third ball, if you take it to the opposite side of the court, it's got to be clean. Service ace for Minnesota, and the lead stretches to five, nine to four, set number two. The Golden Gophers dominated the opening frame, winning that 25 to 12. Serving is CC McGraw. There's Jones with a kill. Looking at her take the swing. Was able to make a very good high contact on that ball and went through that block. Jones again, poked up by Dowler. 
Dollar again keeps it alive. Go million. Sets Sire, and Sire's attack goes long. Point Minnesota. Let's see if Sire's swings are starting to climb. Yeah, 20 attacks now. Just one kill in this match. Five hitting errors for Sam Sire. That's hitting a negative 200. Way off the net with that attack. And that gave Minnesota's block plenty of time to set up. And Maryland's going to use its first time out of set number two as the Golden Gophers start to pull away 11 to 5. Golden Gophers playing their final home weekend of the regular season. And I mentioned earlier, they love to pack the path. Minnesota is fourth in the country in attendance, uh, better than. 4,700, nearly 4,800 uh, per home match. Look at that. The Big Ten has three of the top four attendance numbers in the country. But Maryland says, you know what? We're not intimidated going on the road. Maryland has won seven of their ten true road matches this season. And we go back to a moment earlier this season when Maryland played at Purdue, who was at the time ranked number nine in the country. And Sidney Dollar kind of set the tone, for at least for a moment, and maybe for the entire match proving that uh, she wasn't too intimidated. They posted a video to, uh, to TikTok, and we talked about Sydney Dowler being the, the heart, the soul, the leader, the, ener the energetic one, and uh, she kind of set the tone, wasn't intimidated by the crowd at all. So watch this. Coach Hughes, Probably when we interviewed him, this, uh, ignore the everybody noises, asked, was this planned? Was this She's planned? Twice. Watch her here. Sydney Dowler even smiling at the... There was a, there was a hard time to leave action uh, about a, a minute and a half or so while they sorted something out, so the Purdue crowd Kind of taunting Maryland Even the a little shaky bit. Fingers yeah, right. on her serve. So it, she was doing it too back to the crowd, and then she had to go serve when they resumed play. And they said she knew she could not miss that serve. <laughs> so she gave it about a 60%, you know, power so that she had a good serve and not make an error. Keep it in play. Yeah, she had fun with the crowd, and the team kind of reacted to that too. You saw them all do that little uh, the handshake too, and and you know, maybe that set the tone that day because Maryland went on to defeat Purdue in West Lafayette, the first ever road victory over a top 10 team in Maryland program history. And they look at, back at that moment, uh, smile and have reason to because they went on to win it. There's Dowler covering that tip. Now Go Million bumps it and a set out of the back row is dug easily. Winnis, she's rejected and that falls to the floor for a Maryland point. You have to keep your eye on Sydney Dollar, six foot setter, six feet. She actually gets up pretty high, has a great jump, and you're going to see her really have a good solid block. She took over the starting job as the setter at Maryland in her freshman season. The last uh, couple of weeks started the last nine matches, and she's never given the job up since then. Here she is winding up and swinging off the block and getting a kill. She has to stay alive. If you don't stay alive as a 5-1 setter and a lefty, then the blockers just have to camp on two players. So her being alive and active is going to be important for them to even come back in this set. Ivy slaps at that, just got enough on it to get the kill, and Maryland's uh, caught off a couple of points to come to within four of she's Minnesota. La she's laughing. You know, she mishit it, but hey, doesn't matter how you get it. It's the same result. Serving a deep in land fair. Tough set for Shaftmaster to, then she hit it into the net. And that's another point in Maryland. That was a good timeout. They have started, they've, they've come out of that break. Played well, reeled off a couple of points and are now within three. Serving a sire, again, serving right at land fair. Tapped over by Erica Davis, and she gets the kill. Davis, number 20 in the middle. Transfer out of Ohio State. She's a sophomore from Hillsboro, North Carolina. Played at Christian High School. She's really come on for Minnesota the last three weeks, in her last five matches especially. She had eight kills in the match against Wisconsin. And she only played in four of the first 17 matches. 
Taylor Landfair stuck her hand out, kept that ball in play, and Maryland couldn't take advantage of it. Thirteen nine, and the go for serve. And Lanford just kind of put her hand out there. Yeah, that time nobody can reach it on the Minnesota side. So there's a kill in the middle for Maryland. Now that was Jones, and she'll go to the bench. Consistently serving at Lanfair, Erica Davis gets a kill. There's a net violation called on Maryland. And another point for Minnesota, Davis will exit on the kill. That was a great attack. She came in very strong, and that's what you want to do is you want to sell it to the block to make sure in case they want to set it outside, but she got the kill. Much closer battle midway through set number two. 14 10, Minnesota continues to lead. They took set one. When Minnesota takes the first two sets in a match, they are 10 and 0 on the season. Good block that time by Maryland. Or did that end up out of bounds? Now it's a point for the Terps. Dowler serves it up. Serving at Winnis this time. Shaftmaster punched over by Landfair, but she's rejected. This is Crowell who's back in. And Shaftmaster goes to her again, and second time works. Crowell gets another kill. swing by Crow. She also, she hasn't played in that many matches. So it's nice to be able to get that opportunity to come in and make a difference. Rachel Kill Kelly comes in and she serves. Look how far Dowell has to come off the net to set that. Carter Booth off the block. Joust. Go million with a great dig. Shaftmaster gets the kill for Minnesota. As I said, Carter Booth, that slide attack was the first one that she didn't get a kill. But do you notice they made a switch and they flipped. So Sydney Crowell is not on the front row for to be that six foot blocker against Carter Booth. Ivy can't keep that in play and it's back to back points for Minnesota stretching the lead to 6, 17 to 11 and Maryland is gonna take another timeout. Adam Hughes held on to it. He went to two early timeouts in set one, and things really got away, and they were helpless. Here he held on to that second timeout a while, but now the Golden Gophers are starting to pull away. Again, Maryland comes in two games or two wins above 500 at 14 and 12, five and nine in conference play. They're coming off of a win against Iowa. They beat the Hawkeyes three to one in their last match. It was their first Big Ten home win of the season and their first win at home since August. 72 days had passed between their wins uh, in College Park. And they had to come back, uh, come from behind to do that. They lost the first set and then uh, took the match, uh, thrilling set number four, 27 to 25, out hitting the, uh, the Hawkeyes 288 to 129. So. Coming in feeling pretty good in this match against Minnesota. I mean, you, it, you can have this static for almost just about everybody in the conference because everybody's playing a ton of matches against ranked teams when you play in the Big Ten. And four more ranked teams left to go. Hey, Coach Hughes, you know, if you just take, you know, the last few minutes, he spent the most time in that timeout, you know, talking to Layla Ivey. That's a lot of pressure. A freshman coming in, playing number nine, and really kind of having expectations to really get a lot of the job done. And she has jumper's knee right now, so she's not playing at 100%. So take all of that. She's a local kid. 
uh, from Maryland. So you just want to see her do well, especially as a freshman coming in and playing number nine, Minnesota. Well, it probably says, look, you're not a freshman anymore. You had 19 kills to lead us to that win over Iowa in our last match. She's got over 250 kills in her freshman season. She's averaging uh, 2.7 kills per set. So at this stage of the game, the experience is there. Maybe the body is starting to wind down a little bit. Maybe a little more tired mentally because the grind is much different than it was 12 months ago when she was playing at the uh, Indian Creek High School in Annapolis. Well, and not only that, confidence. So if you're a confidence as, as a freshman versus senior or grad or your fifth year senior, it's a big difference. Got players like uh, Raynell Jones, who's a graduate senior. Been around a while. In the middle, there's a swing by Anastasia Russ, and she's dug. From the floor, that's set free by Landfair. Fight night for her. There's a block by Carter Booth, one-on-one -on -one with Russ. Carter Booth right now is really, I said it the last time, she's honing in on Russ, and she's owning that right now so we're gonna have to get Russ to move a little bit instead of just doing the quick one in the middle and a receiving error by Maryland and they had that timeout earlier where they closed the uh, the gap this last timeout has not stopped the Minnesota momentum 20 to 11 the Golden Gophers the lead in set number two and serving on the line that goes past uh, Sam Sire not a good decision and a service ace puts Minnesota up by 10. I think earlier I had stated that it is so important that you have to be on, you have to be giving your best. Coach Hughes said you have to come out and give it everything you have every minute of the game. And tonight, you know, I'm gonna just focus on Sire here, someone who they rely on, who gets over, has over a thousand total attempts, fourth in digs, and she's just not on tonight, which you know what, at the end of the season, and you're not playing maybe the best, it's okay, it's all right. She's just gotta kinda get back into rhythm and, you know, get those full swings. A thousand and one swings coming into the match tonight for Sam Sire. I think it's about 400 more, 350 more than anybody else on the team. And Maryland's just not communicating. And as we reach the final stages of set number two, balls are falling to the floor. And there's not a lot of movement. The hitting errors, receiving errors, and, and mental errors, if you will. Another tough serve. That at Grimshaw. She's going to get the swing. And that's off of Landfair, and it sails long. And that's a point for Maryland. Well, and I also think it's tough. If you take the team, and I coach 17-year-olds right now, is, you know, the chemistry is so important. You've had two girls that are have been injured. Now you've got Sire, who's one of your go-tos, not having a great night. You know, the chemistry, the mental place, you know, you're trying to keep that up, and it can be difficult. Carter Booth goes down the line and they hit it wide. And that's a point for Maryland. Uh, we've talked about Ivy and as this long season has gone on, if you're Maryland and you, you know it's probably inevitable that the season will come to an end when the regular schedule, regular season ends. But if you are, that's a great play by Shaftmaster and a ball handling violation is called on Maryland. And, Minnesota's at set point. On the other side of the net, Carter Booth is also a true freshman, but she's playing for the number nine ranked team in the country. There's momentum, there's a, a, a feel good vibe on your side. So mentally, you're, you, you're not quite as drained perhaps as you are as a true freshman when things aren't quite going as well as you would hope. I think you make a great point. You know, Minnesota's in a comfortable place. They're, you can see them, they're playing relaxed. They know what they do well, and Coach McCutcheon has trained them to do well. He's always talked about that first ball, first contact, and everything else will flow, and you're seeing that tonight. Ball hit long by Landfair, and that's another point for Maryland. And Minnesota thought that there was a touch, and so Hugh McCutcheon is gonna go to the card, and we're going to have our first review of the night. If if that's a kill for Landfair, that would be her seventh of the match, and that would bring set number two to an end. 
So the challenge review system is very interesting in how coaches use it and when they use it. It is newer. I think it could be maybe the third year of the challenge review system, which I think is fantastic because as a collegiate official in volleyball, we want to get it right. And so this is a great opportunity. You only get two challenges per set. If you lose that challenge, that goes away. If you win the challenge, you get to keep that second one. And, and so he has the opportunity to use it, might as well. And if you go to a fifth set, you get a chance to uh, get that back. And it appears as though the decision has been made. And it looked like there was a touch, and it also looked like it may have been fairly close to being in, but it, it did look like a finger was bent back on that attack. And that's a kill for Landfair, and that's a point for Minnesota, and a set to victory for the Golden Gophers, 25 to 14. Minnesota is making quick work of Maryland, and this is the 11th time this season that Minnesota has taken the first two sets. And attack has not been efficient, just 236, but it has been effective and it has been widespread. And look at Taylor Landfair and Jenna Winnis. They're two outsides getting the job done. And we can't forget Carter Booth, too, swinging in there on the backside of the setter. But once again, outside Minnesota. And talking about Minnesota and maybe looking forward to this tournament ahead of them, this would be their 27th appearance in the NCAA tournament, 26-9 and record in the national championship tournament under coach McCutcheon nine out of ten they've made it to the elite eight five times so once again it will be great to see coach McCutcheon get his last run before he hands the reins over to someone else yeah it, uh, is it a it's a program that just has a ton of volleyball history and Mike Hebert the legendary Hall of Fame coach who was uh, one of uh, Hugh McCutcheon's pre predecessors took Minnesota to the final four three times and uh, racked up 381 wins uh, during his tenure in Minneapolis. We're talking about the, the offense that we've seen from uh, Minnesota, the number one offensive uh, hitting team in the in the Big Ten. You've got Winnis with seven kills to lead all attackers, and that's the seventh kill for Carter Booth. That matches her teammate. And oh, by the way, Taylor Landfair, who's trying to get to double figures for the, uh, what would it be, the 23rd match of the season. That might be our only drama here tonight. Will Landfair get to double digits? She's done so every match so far this season. She had six. There's a kill for Maryland. That's Grimshaw. Great swing by Grimshaw. 6-2 pin hitter once again hasn't played in very many matches. Sydney Dollar, the uh, the setter for Maryland. She has 13 assists on the night. There's a ball that he has touched at the net and another kill for Booth. We are also seeing a new face for Maryland right now. Aaron Morrissey, a 6'1 sophomore outside hitter, I believe could have taken Sire's place right now. And she just got her first kill. Trying to find a spark on that Maryland side. There she is, a, a sophomore outside hitter out of Tampa, Florida. There's a swing by Shaftmaster. She gets her fourth kill. She did a nice job with that, especially a left-handed 6-3 setter. She just went up. It looks like she was going to set, and then she took that dump straight down. They were not ready for that. Such good court awareness to know where that defense is and to know when you can take a swing like that. And there's a service ace. Spirits were high just a moment ago on the Maryland side, and, and things have dropped quite a bit. Back-to-back -back points by Minnesota, and the lead is 5-2. Now, traditionally, set number three has been pretty good for Maryland. They've won 18 of the 25 third sets that they played this season. There's a block that's out of bounds and a point for the Terrapins. 
Look at that. 18 and 7 in set three. Tough team to sweep. Uh, tough team to sweep. And they're outscoring their opponents by almost five uh, points per set. Outscoring opponents 601 to 479. So it's not exactly going into the locker room for a lengthy halftime. Just about five minutes to break tonight. But they do make some necessary adjustments to come back and have some fire in that third frame. Yeah, and it all, another thing is what does the coach do during that five minutes? It's so important to try to get everybody to rebuild, start over. You can use the, hey, you know, we're great in a third set. You've got to use whatever you have in your pockets to make sure that they come back and feel a little bit better. And knowing that they're successful in this third set, that could give them a little bit of a gumption. That was not a good decision by Sydney Dowler. She mishit that badly. Set her trying to make a play on the attack. I'm not even sure that hit the net. Point for Minnesota. Dowler goes behind her. And that is Jones who's rejected. Ivy's going to give it a try, and she sails it long. Five-point Minnesota lead. Minnesota has never lost to Maryland. 14-0 since the two teams became co-members of the Big Ten Conference. Lefty swing by Crowell. At the net, Erica Davis got up there with Wenis. Another point for Minnesota. And Adam Hughes is forced to use another early timeout. You see that uh, Minnesota has dominated the series 14-0, 11 3-0 sweeps, and we might be watching another one. Now, if you go into the Maryland record books, Maryland says it's a 17-0 Minnesota lead. Now, you would think maybe Maryland might, okay, we'll agree with you. It's, take away those other three losses, but they date the series back to 1986 when they were not both members of the of the Big Ten. So both, I guess, are technically correct because 14-0 in Big Ten play, 17-0 overall. But nevertheless, the Golden Gophers haven't been beaten by the Terps. Here's what Minnesota has been able to do in Big Ten conference play. Again, coming in 10-4 in the league, in fourth place behind that trio of terrific teams, Nebraska, Ohio State, and Wisconsin. The Golden Gophers have, have swept Minnesota, swept Michigan, also Michigan State, Illinois, Iowa, and the Michigan teams again. I always love to hear what coaches think of each other, you know, and what they talk about behind the scenes. Right. And it was fun talking to Coach Hughes about Coach McCutcheon. Yeah. And first of all, Coach Hughes says, Coach McCutcheon, great human being. He's always learning something from him. And he said his passion is leadership. And that's why you're going to find him in his new position. But the fun thing was, is they said they always play a game, is what would you be doing if it wasn't coaching? <laughs> Do you want to take a guess? Coach McCut McCutcheon wants to work in an aquarium or be a zoologist. Yeah, right. If, if he's going to go work in coaching development. I'm not sure if there's an, uh, a parallel there, or if the, but nevertheless, uh, he's going to go into coaching development. And uh, Adam Hughes always answers back that he would open up a coffee shop. Apparently, he's a coffee uh, connoisseur, which perks up a lot of people when they hear that uh, somebody's a good coffee maker. Pun intended. It's fun to talk about the coaches a little bit because you look at them and they're always so serious. Ivy winds up again and loops that into the hole in the donut and it's a point for Maryland. The other th thing about their conversation and their relationship, obviously, Hugh McCutcheon is a legend and one of the most revered coaches in the volleyball world. Adam Hughes on his way up his fifth season at, at Maryland. And he said one thing that when I, I see Coach McCutcheon, I call him coach and he has to remind him, I, my name is Hugh. So he's trying to bring the younger, in, you know, and make him appear. And that's why he's going to do what he's going to do, which is going to really teach leadership in all of athletics for Minnesota. Golden Gophers lead at 10 to 5 here in set number three. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Oh, Anastasia Rush had to use every bit of that lengthy wingspan just to get a hand on the ball and not enough to clear the net. The forehead violation gives a point to Minnesota. It's an 11-5 advantage. Maryland's done well with the transfer portal. Bringing in some experience, you've got Grimshaw, who was a four-year starter at, at Temple, all AAC player. Anastasia Rush, the transfer from Pittsburgh, played in the, uh, the NCAA tournament three seasons. And we've got a challenge by Maryland on that last play, saying that there was a touch. And back to the monitor we go. Minnesota right now with a 12-5 uh, to 5 advantage in set number three, trying to close out the Terps. They'll turn their attention tomorrow, to or two days, to take on Indiana at the path. Once again, with the challenge review system, you know, Coach Hughes taking this, there's a lot of feedback from the players on the floor. Like if they feel that there was a touch, they're looking at Coach going, take the challenge. Um, and you see a lot of coaches just trust those players, which is great. Um, they're on the floor, they're in, you know, within the foot or two feet. Um, and so I think another thing with challenge review system, it's almost a timeout. It can even last a little bit more than a timeout. Right. So is that another opportunity to say, slow down, regroup? Could I, you know, get the girls, get them together on the floor, start talking about what you need to do to, you know, kind of get out of the hole that they're in. You don't want them to be too long, and this is the case in any sport since video replay has been implemented. If it's too long, you can, you can uh, cool down a little bit. You can lose momentum if you've got it going and, uh, you want to make sure that the process, which I think everybody would agree has been good for the game, that it is done quickly and efficiently. I'm always amazed that when we take a look at these these pictures, how high speed it is on the attack, and we just can't quite get that exact freeze frame. There's always the blur. Is there or isn't there a touch? And it's kind of tough to tell with all those hands up and arms up, and the call is going to stand. And that's a lost challenge. That's Melanie Shaftmaster. She's got one more year. She's a junior. Golden Gophers can't wait to have her back, but a lot of business left to take care of this season. And you're seeing a lot of grad students now. Right. COVID year, everybody typically just got another year if they were already in the system. And so you're seeing a lot of them going on and doing some graduate work. Wenis gets the service ace. Dowler attacked that. It was Shaftmaster who dug it. Now set free to Maryland. Going to the middle, and there's Russ with a kill. Made great full contact. That's the first one I've seen that she just had a full hand on that ball, which is what she needs. Seven-point advantage for Minnesota. Here's Landfair getting the kill. I was about to say our drama might be coming back into play here. Landfair, she's had double-digit kills in every match so far this season. The only player in the Big Ten with at least ten. And with that, she now has seven. She needs three more. Winding up and getting the kill is Layla Ivy, the freshman from Annapolis. What a bright future she has. They have two Laylas on their roster, Layla Ivy and Layla Rick, so they call Layla Ivy Livy. And talking to Coach Hughes again, you ask him, you know, what what goes into planning, especially two top 10 teams in what, 24 hours? And you're going to see tonight, he said, you have to prepare the same way. And the challenges are obstacles are harder, windows for opportunity are narrow, and you must play clean. And I would say tonight they're not playing clean, and that's why you're seeing this discrepancy in the points and sets. Landfair, Doug that time. McGraw directs it to Landfair. She's blocked. Wenis, Landfair on the run, loops it over. Gomillion digs it and sends it back over. What a great play by the 
Libero for Maryland. Gilmillian bumps it. And that attack is into the block. You saw a spark. You saw a spark there. And they have to put it all out there. They have to give everything they can. Great dig, save. But once that transition came back to them, they could not execute it. Well, that was a fun play watching Milan Gomillion, sophomore from Bowie, Maryland. And there's a service ace. And Maryland is going to use its second timeout of set number three. And they went to Aaron Morrissey, which this is very common that if a new player comes out, hasn't played that many matches, came in for Sire, that it would be very common that you target them on serve receive. Well, let's take a look at what's ahead for both of these teams to close out the regular season. Again, Minnesota has senior day on Sunday at the PAV, and then they're gonna load up the bus and be gone a while. Traveling to 16th ranked Penn State and then to Rutgers. And then they've got a couple of days off to prepare for a tough one two punch at the end. They'll take on Ohio State in Columbus and then Nebraska the next night in Lincoln on the Husker Senior Day. That will not be easy, but that's the kind of schedule they've had all season long. 12 of their first 22 matches were against ranked opponents. They went six and six against. Uh, that slate, 19 matches all total this season were against teams that played in the NCAA tournament a year ago. But if you're going to be at this level, you're going to play in the Big Ten, you're going to have that kind of schedule anyway. And, and that's what Hugh McCutcheon and his philosophy has been throughout his uh, now 11-year tenure at Minnesota. you got to play tough. And he says, he says, playing in this Big Ten schedule, it wears you down or it polishes you up. But it is a grind. And as we know, with his leadership style, he tries to develop resilience and competitive composure. And they have to be the best of the best. And with, uh, Maryland takes on Wisconsin tomorrow night. Last six matches for them against the top 12 opponents, including tonight, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Ohio State. They're going to try and sweep the season series for Purdue. They'll have uh, the Boilermakers in College Park in uh, one of their final matches. So uh, it's something to, to close out the season. A sweeping Purdue would be a, a, a big deal for this program that had a win last year over Wisconsin during the Badgers National Championship season. Minnesota scrambling around and can't return serve, and that's a point for the Terrapins. And we can talk about, you know, it was recruiting you know, signing day, and it yeah. was a big day of recruitment just recently this past week. And Coach Hughes, I know in the incoming class, there's two that he could tell us about. Sid Bryan, a six rotation outside, local kid. And Eva Rohrbach, a top recruit, recruit, I think was in the top 25 in prep dig. And so she's middle from San Diego and an incredible slide hitter, he said. Yeah. Take on the Big Ten. Oh, by the way, do some recruiting, too. That's signing day toward the end of the regular season. Had a couple of service aces for the Terrapins, closing that uh, Minnesota gap. There's Lanfair getting a kill. Well, is she going to get double dig digits or not? That's her seventh. She's hitting a below 200 for this match. Probably not first and foremost in her mind, but statistics like that give us something to talk about. Landfair will go back to serve. Minnesota back up by seven. Trying to sweep the Terrapins. Booth. Boom. Gets the kill. For her size at 6'7", she moves very, very good. She's quick, has a high swing, and goes right over the block. And confident. It, it, we saw her last week, and she just plays with such confidence with that team around her. And she's fit in so well. Out of Denver, Colorado, the top recruit in that state, and 14th overall coming into the season. And is that tooled off the block? No, nope, it was hit out of bounds, cut in front. And Minnesota's lead is nine. Landfair will serve again. There's a kill for Raynell Jones. 
1911. Right now, you can see she's kind of getting back into rhythm. Can they make can they make this comeback being down by eight right now? When is his dug? Jones tries again. Gets it at Kilt Kelly. Out of the back row, Landfair. There is a touch. And that's a kill for Landfair and a point for Minnesota. And there are 20. So far, Minnesota is out blocked. Maryland six to four. And there's Wenis with another kill. She had such a strong open set with six early kills. She now has eight. Serving as CC McGraw. Prior Lake Minnesota native. And that kill is on the line and a point for Maryland. Haven't talked a lot about CC McGraw. 5'11", she's a grad student and she's leading in digs. Number four for Minnesota all time with over 1,700 digs. Only one player in Minnesota history has gone over 2,000 digs for their career. And that was Genshu back in the early 2000s, 2,791 digs. Nobody else has reached 2,000. So went to Landfair out of the back row again, but if they, if you see it, her toes were right on the 10-foot line, which you have to take off behind it, but you can land in front of it, and she was on the line. Minnesota is four away from the sweep. Landfair dug. And there's a kill for Maryland. And that was Sires. She's back in, playing in the back row right now. Got her kill from the back row. And now back to serve. Wenis whips it long. And that's a point for Maryland. Sam Sire. Junior out of Strongsville, Ohio. Back to serve. One handed set poked over by Erica Davis. Tough play for Shaftmaster. And Minnesota's block has been so good tonight. Gwyneth, she's also been pretty good. And she's going to get another kill. Fast arm swing, straight down the line. Defense was there but it just came too hard, too fast. When it's a part of a recruiting class from Minnesota that was number one in the nation back in 2020, class that brought Landfair and Shaftmaster to Minneapolis. That attack is punched long by Raynell Jones. And Minnesota is now Two away, leading this 23 to 15, set number three. Minnesota had a number one class in 2020, top 10 class in 2022. Whoever takes over the job for Huma Cutchin is going to have a lot of talent in the program to work with. Really been the case throughout history at Minnesota. Erica Davis gets a kill, there's a touch there, and the Golden Gophers are at set point. One away from win number 16 on the year and number 11 in Big Ten play. Minnesota really had a good night. Blocking, hitting, defense. You have three players over 250 on the hitting percentage. They were on tonight and ready. Wenis, long range attack, and that sails wide to the other side. Still at match point. And Taylor Landfair with a little bit of a rally here in set number three has 11 kills on the night, so the string is intact. Double figure kills in every match so far this season. 
And that ball is touched. Erica Davis gets the kill, and Minnesota gets the win. Quick work tonight over the Maryland Terrapins, 25-16 the score in set number three. They took the first two, 12 and 13. In Maryland, you know, once again, you can't come 